Hi everyone, Ravi this side. Welcome to Engineering Gadda. In this video, we are going to discuss about implementation of CASE in Spring Boot application. How we can implement CASE in Spring Boot application. That is what we are going to discuss in this video. So let's get started for that. So let me try to go to the next slide and discuss the basic of CASE, its benefit, importance and the way how we can implement CASE in Spring Boot application. Everything we are going to discuss first and then We'll go to the IntelliJ, practically we'll create one Spring Boot application and try to create the CRUD APIs and then we'll see how we can implement the caching in it and then see the results. So that is what we are going to discuss in this video. So let's get started for that. Let me try to go to the next slide and here you can see it is an introduction to caching. So what is caching? First of all, we are going to discuss here. Caching refers to the technique of storing frequently accessed or computationally expensive data in a temporary storage area okay this allows quicker access to the data when needed again rather than fetching it from the original source like database which might be slower or more resource intensive so let's say you have stored couple of uh, data into the database and you want to access uh, some of the data frequently then the better way to do or to access that data is to store that data in a temporary storage which is CASE. So this is what we are explaining here. CASE refers to the or caching refers to the technique of storing frequently accessed or computationally expensive data in a temporary storage area. Okay. In software development, caching plays a crucial role in enhancing performance, reducing load on resources and improving its scalability. Okay, so these are the benefits of caching. Now let me try to go to the next slide and show you the importance of caching in software development. Coming to the performance improvement, caching helps boost the speed and responsiveness of the application by reducing the time needed to access the data. So let's say you have not implemented the caching in your application. So every time when you are hitting the APIs or when you are trying to access the APIs, it will go to the database, fetch out the data for you from the DB and then try to show you, which takes much time every time when you are hitting the APIs. But if you have introduced the caching, the responsiveness and the time taken to reflect the data will be reduced drastically. Okay. When frequently accessed data is stored in the local stored locally, it can be retrieved much faster, leading to quicker response times for the users. Okay. So the performance improvement is the main or you can say key help of the caching in software development. Coming to the second point, reduce load on resources. By storing data in a cache, the demand of the original sources such as database or the server is reduced. This minimizes the load on those resources, preventing them from being overwhelmed and ensuring smoother overall operation. Coming to the third part or third point is scalability enhancement. Caching facilitates scalability by improving the overall efficiency of an application. As the user base grows or when dealing with the increased data volumes, caching data can serve requests more quickly, allowing the system to handle more users or requests without a significant drop in performance. So it helps in scalability as well. So these are the three important of uh, like importance of the caching in software development. The first one is performance improvement. Second one is reduced load on the resources. Third one is scalability enhancement. Now coming to the next part, which is benefit of caching. Coming to the benefit of caching, uh, I have listed out the same three points here as well, which we covered in the importance of caching. Let me try to read out these points for you. So the first benefit of caching is performance improvement. The most immediate benefit is performance enhancement. Application utilizing caching can deliver faster responses, response time and better user experiences, especially for operations that involve frequently accessed data. The second benefit of caching is reduced load. That means it is reducing the load on the sources like DBs by reducing the number of the requests to the original source Caching helps prevent bottleneck and overloading. This ensures that 
the system remains responsive even during the period of high traffic or heavy uses. Now the third benefit is scalability. Caching allows system to handle increased demand without compromising the performance. As more users of the request come in, cache data can fulfill many of these requests, enabling the system to scale more effectively. So these are the benefit of caching. Now coming to the next point, uh, let me try to summarize the things for you, uh, like benefit or the importance of the caching here in single term. Overall, caching is a fundamental technique in software development, significantly contributing to improved performance, reduced resource utilization and enhanced scalability, thereby positively impacting the user experience and the system reliability. That is why uh, caching is more important in today's world of software development and that is why we are discussing the caching here in this video. Now let me try to go to the next slide and show you the type of caching supported in, in Spring Boot. So there are three different type of caching that Spring Boot supports. The first one is in-memory caching like using at the rate cacheable or other uh, annotations you can implement the caching and that is called in-memory caching now coming to the second uh, type of cache implementation in spring boot is using external caching providers like redis memechat uh, caffeine cache hazelcast cache so in this video what we are going to do is we are going to see how using external caching providers we can implement caching in a spring boot application and the external cache that we are going to use here is caffeine cache okay now the third uh, way of implementing cache in a spring boot is doing the configuration like configuration option and flexibility so doing the configuration in the application properties file you can also achieve the caching in a spring boot so here in this video what we are going to do is we are going to see how using the external caching providers which is caffeine cache in our case we are going to implement the caching in spring boot okay now let me try to go to the next slide and let me try to briefly discuss about each of this caching implementation techniques okay one by one so this is in memory caching using at the rate cacheable so annotations, uh, Spring Boot leverage annotation to enable caching at the method levels like at the rate cacheable used to annotate method to cache the result of the method invocation. So whenever you are like, let's say you have developed one method and you annotated that method with at the rate cacheable, that means when, it, when the, uh, whatever is the output of that method, it, been be, it would be cached somewhere. Okay, so this is the purpose of at the rate cacheable wherever it is annotated at a method the output of that method would be cached okay subsequent invocation with the same argument will fetch the result from the cache instead of executing the method okay so first time when you are going to hit that method it will uh, try to fetch out the result from that method and store that uh, result in a cache because that method is annotated with at the rate cacheable and the next time when you are going to hit the method, the result will come from the cache. Uh, it won't be trying to uh, fetch the result from the method. Okay, it will try to fetch the result from the cache. Okay. Now coming to the second annotation, which is cache put. Uh, this forces a method to execute and update the cache with its result. It's useful for scenarios where you want to update the cache irrespective of the irrespective of whether the method is called or not. Okay. So this is for the updation of the cache. Now coming to the third one, which is cache evict, which help us, which help us in uh, eviction of the cache or removing the entries from the cache. So remove entry from the cache based on the certain condition. It allows eviction of the specific entries or the entire cache. So these are the uh, like in-memory caching or you can say annotations based caching, and these are the a particular or main annotations that help us in achieving the caching uh, in a Spring Boot application. There are two videos on my channel where I have discussed how to uh, do the in-memory caching using these annotations and there we have used the caffeine and the hazel cast cache. So if you are new to the caching uh, you can go and watch those videos on my channel or I will provide the link of those video in this video description. So let let me try to go to the next slide and here is the 
second way of implementing the CASA in Spring Boot application, which is using the external caching providers like Redis or the Caffeine. In this video, uh, let me try to again remind you that we are going to use the Caffeine CASA as the external source of caching. Cache Manager Spring Boot provides a cache manager interface that allows various cache providers to be plugged in. Developers can configure and manage caching through different implementation of the cache manager such as concurrent map cache manager, EH cache, cache manager, caffeine cache manager, etc. Each supporting different caching libraries. Okay, so here we are going to use the caffeine cache manager. Here we are going to do the caching implementation using the caffeine cache in a Spring Boot application. Okay, now let me try to go to the next slide and discuss about the third way of uh, doing the caching in a Spring Boot is doing the configuration. So configuration, a Spring Boot offers simple configuration properties to define caching behavior. For instance, you want to specify cache names or expiration times or other cache related configuration, then you can do it in the application.properties file or you can say application.yml file. So this help us in uh, doing the configuration of the caching. Now the how caching works in Spring Boot, uh, that is what we are practically going to discuss and that is why I have not listed out anything here. So we'll see these things practically. We'll also discuss uh, some of the best practices for the caching like cache eviction strategies and monitoring and managing cache performance. Okay, so we'll discuss those things as well. Now let me try to go to the next slide and try to show you the challenges and the limitations of caching. So you are aware that caching brings a lot of benefits for us. It's improved the performance. It help, it help us reducing the load of the resources. It also help us in doing the scalability, right? But there are a lot of challenges and the limitations of implementing caching. So that is what we are going to discuss in this slide. Uh, implementing caching in Spring Boot brings several benefits, but it also comes with its challenges and limitations. And these are the challenges that I have listed out here. Cache invalidation, okay. Memory management, cache eviction strategies, complexity in configuration. So let me try to read out these uh, terms one by one for you and explain you in a detailed manner. Now let me try to bring up uh, one of the major challenge or the limitation of the caching is cache invalidation. So let me try to uh, bring out one example for you. Let's say in your database you have created a one product DB and you have the table inside that DB which is product and that consists of list of products. Okay. Let's say you have a list like a mobile laptop and a tablet something like that and earlier uh, the mobile price was 20,000. Now you have updated that price to 50,000. Okay. And in your cache, the price of the mobile is reflecting still to 20,000. But actual data or actual price of that mobile in your DB is updated to 50,000. So that can cause an inconsistency, right? So, and that can cause a lot of problem here. So, that is what uh, comes to the cache invalidation. One of the significant challenges is maintaining cache consistency. Okay, ensuring that the cache data remains up to date when the underlying data changes can be very complex. So let's say the data is being changed in the database and that is not reflecting the cache. That causes a lot of problem. So that is what we are discussing here is it should not be invalidated with the cache and the database. There should be a consistency with the database and the cache and that requires a lot of uh, effort to do right to make it very consistent. So this is one of the limitation uh, ensuring that the cache data remains up to date when the underlying data changes can be very complex. Invalidating or updating cached entries when the original data is modified or deleted requires a careful management to avoid serving stale or the incorrect data. Now coming to the second limitation or you can say challenge of caching is memory management. 
caching involves storing data in memory and depending on the cache size and the amount of the data being cached it can consume a significant amount of memory improper memory management might lead to the increased memory uses potential memory leaks or even application crashes so this is one of the uh, like i would say major uh, caching challenge to manage the memory coming to the third one which is cache eviction strategy selecting the appropriate cache eviction strategy example least recently used or least frequently used can be challenging different strategies might be suitable for different scenarios and choosing the wrong one could lead to the in insufficient cache uses or the performance issue so let's say some some data uh, was there in the database and now it is being deleted but that data is not being deleted from the cache okay and still a uh, user is able to see that data from the cache even that data is being deleted from the database then that cause the uh, like i would say improper management of the cache eviction and that strategy should be uh, carefully managed okay now coming to the th uh, fourth one which is complexity in configuration configuring caching in spring boot might become complex especially when dealing with the multiple cache managers or when integrating with the various caching providers so let's say in your application you have uh, included more than two or three uh, cache provider like caffeine cache hazel cache cache or some other caches like distributed cache okay so at that time when we have a lot more caching providers in our application then there would be more confusion in their configuration okay understanding the in interfaces of the each caching providers and the configuring them correctly requires expertise so there would be uh, a lot of confusion while doing the configuration of those cache in the application so this is one of the challenge now let me try to go to the next slide and these are the other challenges like cache key design performance trade-off cache related bugs and issues to mitigate these challenges, developers should thoroughly analyze their application requirement and then try to implement the caching in their application. So like I will wait for here or you can pause the video and try to go through these points. Now let me try to summarize these things for you. So to mitigate these challenges, developers should thoroughly analyze their application requirement carefully design cache strategy regularly monitor cache performance and perform testing under various conditions to ensure that the caching implementation align with the application needs and effectively improve the performance without introducing significant complexity or the bugs additionally staying updated with the best practices and leveraging the tools provided by the spring boot for caching man monitoring and the management can help address these challenges okay so let me try to go to the next slide and here is the conclusion for the caching it help us in performance boost resource optimization complexity and the challenges are there some best practices you have to follow in order to implement the caching trade-off and the consideration and continuous monitoring and optimization of the caching is the uh, key to implement the caching so you can go through these points and uh, now uh, what i will do i will try to go to the intellij and try to create one spring boot application there will try to uh, create two apis one is to insert the data into the db second one is to fetch the data from the db and then we'll try to implement the caching in that and then see how the caching implementation is being done in spring boot so let me try to go there and here we are in the intellij now let me try to create one fresh application let's say cache implementation in spring boot okay now select this as a map one and go next let me try to choose the lombok and the wave and the database that we are going to use is mysql 
so just use this mysql driver and i'm also going to use the jpa here so it's bring data jpa now create your application and open it in a new tab let me try to open the data bus for you so just open the mysql db here and i will show you uh, like there is already existing db that i am going to use for this application so i will show you that there are a couple of records in that db already so don't worry on that i am just going to use that db or if you want to freshly create a db and try to insert a couple of records in that db inside the table then uh, then also you can do the same things i will show you those things as well so don't worry on those things so we are using the mysql db uh, let me try to open it out and just wait so here a lot of dbs i have already created and i'm going to use one of them which is uh, product management db and i have selected it out now inside this you can see the column of tables and here we have one table called product so let me try to run or select query here and run this and here you can see we have four record sorry 14 records inside this table we have the 14 products here okay and this table is like consists of the list of products we have id name price and the quantity fields here in this table so this is uh, this is the table that i am going to use or you can say this is the database that i am going to use for our application so here we have our application ready now if we'll go to the source main and java so let me try to do the development here. So what I am going to do is I'm going to create a application which will try to insert the product into the DB and which will try to fetch out the list of the product from the DB. That is what we are going to do here. So before going there, let me try to go to the resource application properties file and do the necessary configuration to connect this application with the database so i already have the configuration ready for you and don't worry on these things uh, what i will do i will try to provide the link of the github of this application in the description of the video so that you can go to the github and directly you can copy these things and change those things according to you and just uh, write it out so here you can see we have the data source url JDBC MySQL and our MySQL is locally up on the port number 3306 and this is the database that I'm using now If we'll go to the DB you can see this product management DB If you want to create a freshly a DB you can provide the name of the DB here Okay, now you have to come to the username and the password for the DB So this is the username for me, which is root and this is the password for me coming to the next configuration which is hibernate configuration you can use it and then uh, this is for the port number on which our application will be running okay so these are the basic configuration now let me try to create the entity and repository service and the controller for the product management so like this is the way we are going to develop we are going to create the entity repository and service and then controller okay so let me try to create the entity first here so created the entity package inside this we'll try to create the entity product okay so just create the class product and if you'll go to the db you will see that the product has id name price and the quantity so the same attributes we are going to put here so private integer id and private string name private price and the quantity so double price 
and then private integer let me see what is quantity quantity okay so quantity so this four attributes we have now we are using the long box so directly we can come here and create the all argument constructor using this annotation no argument constructor and for the getter and setter you can use uh, data here so yeah that's all now let me try to use the table here and let me provide the name of the table that we are using which is product so if you'll come to the database and if you'll come inside the tables you will find this table called product so that is why we are providing the name of the table and okay and if you don't have like if you are freshly creating one db and if you are freshly creating one table so don't worry on those things this configuration and this code will try to automatically like in the application.properties file you did the configuration to uh, generate the codes uh, like is hibernate codes for you so this config this two configuration will take care of uh, creating a table and inside the table creating the uh, schema for you so don't worry on those things if you put this configuration it will try to go to the db try to create a table for you with this table name that you have provided here and it will try to create the schema for you as well so do this necessary configuration and now come to the product entity provide the name of the table that you want to create in our case it is product and these are the attributes of it now if you want to annotate this with at the rate id you can do that and we are good let me try to use entity here so we are good now now let me try to develop the repo or you can say DAO layer so just create one interface product repo and it is the interface it should be there in the package repository so we are good it should be extending the jpa repository and in the jpa repository you have to provide two attributes here one is the name of the entity which is product and the second one is the type of id so id is of integer type that you have to provide here let me try to import the product and the type of id in the product which is integer if we'll go to the product you can see this is the type of id so we are good with the repo now coming to the service let me try to create the product service interface first and then we'll create the implementation so service package and then we have the product service now here we'll try to create two methods one is to insert the product into the db second is to fetch out the list of product so first one is let's say fetching out the list of product so get all products now second one is to insert the product so we are returning the product that we are going to insert and we are passing the same product which we want to insert into the db now let me try to create one package called impl here and inside that we'll try to create the product service implementation class so impl dot product service impl it would be implementing the product service okay now you have to import this and then override those two methods so we have to implement those two methods so just implement this and we are good now before going to do that let me try to annotate this with at the rate service annotation and 
I'm just going to uh, auto add the product repo. Okay. Why we are doing it? Let me try to tell you. So with the help of product repository, what we are going to do is we are going to call the already provided uh, JPA methods like find all and save to interact with the DB. Okay. So just do this. So just call the find all and return it. I will uh, describe you the whole flow. So don't worry on this. So product survey product report dot save pass the product here. So what is happening here is in this uh, which is a service layer. In the implementation of these methods, what we are doing is we are calling the products repository and in the product repository will go there. It is implement. It is extending the JPA repository and the JPA provides couple of methods to interact with the database like find all to fetch out all the records from the DB to if you want to insert something there is a save if you want to insert all of them there is a save all so this is what uh, like we are doing here that is why we are auto wiring the product repo in this class and then with the help of product repo uh, reference we are calling the JPA provided methods to interact with the database now our service layer is ready now let me try to create the controller here so controller product controller now let me try to annotate this with that the rest controller and if you want to put the request mapping you can do that so let me try to put the mapping as api and now here we have to develop these two apis one is to fetch all the product from the db and the second one is to insert the product into the db so product let me try to import the list uh, let's say get all product now we have to call the service layer methods uh, this get all products and insert products you can see this in the controller so for that we need to auto wire the product service here so just auto wire product service and with the reference of this we can directly call the methods of the product service so just use this product service dot find all get all products and then simply return it now we have to develop the second api which is the which would be the post api because we are just going to insert the product into the db so insert now it is returning the same product that we are going to insert so product insert product we have to pass the product in the argument as a request body so just use the request body here and with the help of the product service we are just going to call the insert product method and then insert it let me try to show you the flow so this is the api or you can say controller layer we are going to the service layer we are going to its implementation we are with the help of repository we are calling the save method which is provided by the jpa to interact with the database we are passing this product and it is inserting the product into the db so this is the whole flow and for the fetch if you'll go to the controller you can see we have the uh, api called products it is going to the service layer get all products method and here with the help of jpa provided method which is find all we are fetching out all the products from the DB and then returning. So this is the whole flow. Uh, now let me try to run this application and try to hit this API. If they are working fine, then we'll try to go and implement the caching in it. So just run this application and just wait. Let me try to open the postman here. So go to the cache. Uh, let me try to 
bring out the URI for you. So our application would be uh, up all locally on the port number 9000. If we'll go there to the application, you can see this. Let me try to go to the application properties file. Here you can see we have changed the port number to 9000. Default port number is 8080, uh, but we have changed it to the 9000. That is why our application is up on the port number 9000. So our application is locally up on the port number 9000. Now uh, the class level mapping was API. And then if you want to fetch all the products, then the mapping was products. Let me try to go to the controller lens and show you those things. So here you can see the class level mapping is API and then to fetch out the products, you have forward slash products mapping. So that is what we are doing here. And then if you hit this, you will get the list of products. So you can see this. We were having 14 products. And if you go to the database, you can also see the same things. So everything is working fine. Now for the insert one, let me try to insert one of the product into the DB and then show you. So just copy this insert, come here to the postman and just go to this post API and then wait. So our application is up locally on the port number 9000, then API, then insert. And now you have to go to the body and you have to provide the product here so what all attributes we have we have the id name and price and the quantity so those things you have to provide here so come here and uh, let's say id is uh, till what we have inserted 14 so let me try to bring out the id as 15 and then we have the name Let's say we are just going to insert a spring boot casing book, something like that. And uh, let me try to make this capital B. Now we have the price and the quantity. So price. Let's say price is uh, 3000 and we have the quantity. Let's say it is one. So this is uh, this is a product we have. ID is 15, name is this, which is a book and the price and the quantity we have. Now if we insert it, here you can see this thing is inserted and the status is 200. If we we'll go to the DB, and if you run this again, then see. Here you can see we have inserted the 15 product, which is Spring Boot Casing Book. Price is 3000 and the quantity is one. So both of the APIs are working fine. Now is the time to implement the casing. And in the beginning, we have uh, been told that we are going to use the caffeine cache to implement the casing. So come here and uh, let me try to search for the caffeine cache maven dependency so we are going to include this dependency in our applications so that we can use it out so you can search for the spring like caffeine cache maven dependency and this will come up go to this person try to copy this dependency and come here to the application go to the pom.xml file and inside the dependency uh, you can insert it out so inside the dependency we have paste it out and then try to rerun or load your maven changes so here you can see it is started uh, trying to download this and once it is done you can start doing the development related to the cache so let me try to go to the controller and here you can see in the controller we have two APIs. One is to find all the products and second is to insert the product into the DB. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement the caching for the 
find all products method or find all product API. So if you'll go to this uh, service layer of this API and its implementation, you can see this here. Uh, this method is uh, finding out all the products from the DB and returning us. So here in this class, I'm going to implement the caching. So once what we'll do, we'll try to create a cache and uh, we'll try to use that cache to hold the values which we fetch from the DB and then store that values into the cache. So the next time when we hit the API, it will fetch out the details or the list of the product from the cache not from the DB. So for, for the first time when you are uh, running your application, when you are going to hit the API, it is going to the DB, fetching out the list of product, storing it to the cache. And then with the second time you are going to hit the API, it is taking out the list of product from the cache itself, not from the DB. So that is what we are going to perform here. So before going to do that, let me try to create the cache here. So, so it is cache. We have to provide the uh, key of the cache and the list or you would say the value that you want to store in that particular cache key. Okay, so the key type is a string and the value that we want to store in that key is the list of a string or you can say list of product. Sorry, yeah, it would be list of product. So what we are doing here is we are creating one cache and the cache takes two argument. One is the key and second is the values that you want to store in that particular key of the cache. So the key is of a string type and the value that we want to store in that particular key is a list of product. Okay, now let me try to make it private and let's say its name is my cache. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create one post construct method so that when we start uh, our application this method will run and what we are going to do inside this method is we are going to build this cache so when we start our application this cache will be built and when we first time try to hit the api to fetch out all the products from the db it will go to the database try to fetch out the list of product from the db and store it in the cache okay so this method is just uh, to build the cache or to initialize the cache when we start our application so just let me try to do that okay now my cache equal to caffeine we are going to use the caffeine cache here so caffeine dot new builder and i'm just going to set the size so maximum size let's say it is 100 and then we can simply build it out so our uh, when we just uh, when we run our application this cache will be initialized with these details like maximum size is this and it is taking the implementation from the caffeine cache okay now what i'm going to do here is first of all uh, i'm just going to fetch the details from the db and then store it simply into the cache okay let me try to do that so here let's say i'm just going to create one list of product and its variable name is product list just fetching out the list of product from the db storing into this variable product list and then uh, going to use this my cache and then trying to uh, put the value okay so let me try to create one key here so let's say the key name is products and then what we are putting here is list of products and then simply returning it out so let me try to print something here say that um, yeah list of product is stored in cache okay and if you want to print out the cache, you can also do that. Let me try to do those things as well. So I just want to print out the size of the cache so that you can, or you can print out the states as well. We'll see. Yeah. First we'll, uh, 
first let me try to print out the size later on we can print the states and all so our applic uh, let me try to go to the controller and show you the whole flow so when we are going to hit this application sorry api what it is going to do is it is going to this implementation service layer implementation in the implementation what we are doing is we are fetching out the list of product from the db using this uh, find all method of the gpa putting that uh, list of product into a cache with the key as products just simply printing uh, these two details one is the simple string or a statement you can say and the second one is the estimated size of the cache so if something is uncertain to the cache the size would be one okay so that is what we are going to store here now let me try to rerun our application and try to hit the api so go to the controller and let me try to go to the postman go to this okay yeah it is api products now our application is up and running now come here and try to hit this and here you can see we are getting the result and if you'll go there to the application you can see uh, list of product in list of products is inserted into cache and here uh, you can see the estimated size of the cache is one that means in this key let me try to go there that means uh, in this cache with this key we have inserted one list of product okay one list of product not we are not uh, simply estimating the size of the cache based upon the uh, how many products we have inserted right or we have fetched from the db we are just putting one list of product and that is why the estimated size of the cache is one okay now let me try to hit this again and then see again it is coming as one so every time we are hitting it it is going to the db fetching out the list of product inserted into the cache and here we are printing the size of the cache now this is not uh, the main goal that we want to achieve right so what we are going to achieve is uh, for the first time if you are going to hit this api it should go to the db and for the consecutive next time it should go to the cache and fetch out the detail from the cache okay so that is what we are going to do so let me try to put some condition here so let's say if uh, my cache dot get if present so here in the get if present you can provide the key that you want to search so it is uh, saying that if this key is present then uh, yeah if this key is not null oh sorry then it should go to the cache and fetch the list of product from the cache so if it is not null what it should do it should go to the my cache dot get list of products and Let me try to create one list and uh, sorry it is, should be list and then let me try to print some statement here so let's say we are retrieving the products from cache and then simply return the list from here if this is not the case uh, like let's say when you are going to hit the api for the first time it should come here for the first time this my cache would be empty so this uh, key won't be there right so it should go to the find all uh, method of the jpa and find the list of product from the db and then let me try to remove it mm -hmm. 
yeah find out the product from the db put it into the cache and here let me try to list of product is uh, inserted or stored something like that in the cache and here you can remove this and then simply return it so let me try to summarize the whole flow when you are going to hit this api it should go to this implementation what we are expecting here is uh, if this cache is holding some value with this key then it should fetch out the list of the product or list of the value sorry the value that uh, this key is holding into the cache and then simply return it out if this is not the case uh, it should go to the db and find all the list of product insert into the cache and then simply return so that is what the whole flow is so when the second time you are going to hit the api it should like the value should be there into the my cache so it should come here in this if loop and then it should fetch out the list of product from the cache not from the db for the second time so let me try to run the application and then try to hit the api and then show you so go to the postman and our application is up go to the postman hit it out and here you uh, just try to mention the time that it is taking so you can see the time taken is 419 millisecond and this time it is going to the db and fetching out the list of product from the db so here you can see in the console uh, list of product is inserted into the cache and it you can see uh, we have printed something wrong here what it should say is uh, list of the product is being fetched from the db and inserted into the cache so you can correct it out so it is going to this part now when you are going to hit this api again for the second time you can see that drastically the time has been reduced to mil 12 millisecond earlier it was 419 now it becomes 12 millisecond and this time you can see we are retrieving the product from the cache in the console so for the second time it is going to this uh, part and trying to fetch out the list of the product inserted into the cache and if you'll come again and try to hit it out again the time is reduced and it is uh, fetching out the list of the product from the cache itself again you can see so this is how you can implement the caching in a spring boot application if you want more videos on the caching implementation in a spring boot ap application then uh, let me know in the comment section and if you are new to the channel please subscribe the channel and share the content with your friends in the coming videos if you need the uh, content on how to evict the cache in the spring boot ap application then let me know i will cover those things as well thanks and please like and support the channel